Alright, so I let this disgusting air cleaner sit over the course of the weekend with that degreaser on it. And uh, even with that being said, it was still so hard packed with filth I had to use acetone and paper towels to soak through all the last of that oil. But I finally got rid of it. You can see we've got fresh oil in here now. Probably takes the better part of a gallon, believe it or not. Uh, the other oil bath air cleaners I've worked with, they're for tractors, probably half the size, so the air cleaner's like considerably smaller. Uh, but anyway, yeah, um, I guess what we're probably gonna do is stick this in there and I'll just plan to change it in the, I don't know, after 50 hours or something, just because I'm assuming the last bits of filth from inside the air cleaner body are gonna work their way down into the bowl, especially because I sprayed a bunch of solvent up in there. And uh, also there is still some residue in this in places where I can't easily reach with paper towels. So let's stick this back on the tractor. And then I'm actually pretty interested to see how well this thing is going to start. On one hand, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, having all that filth in there, it's probably going to be kind of like setting the choke on a lawnmower, you know? So it's starved for air a little bit, thus it should start easier because the fuel, the air mixture is richer. Uh, but on the other hand, that only goes so far, and like I said, I'm amazed the engine could breathe at all. So it might run, it might start and run even better now. So, we'll find out. Alright, it took me a few tries, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to go in there. And, uh, this is the first test of this tractor. I've not started this thing, shoot, since before the oil change. It's been probably close to a week at this point. So we'll see if it's easier or harder to start now. I'm very happy. These tractors are not known for their easy cold starting abilities. If you search like Case 401 diesel hard starting or whatever, you find a lot of people who say anytime under 40 degrees, even when they're new, they're a pain to get going. But they say two things. Uh, it, most people will tell you it's fine to use starting fluid. Ether is bad, but the starting fluid that doesn't have it is good. Or some people say WD-40 works like a champ. Uh, but whatever the case, you do not want to mix that with using the grid heater on this because that can cause an explosion inside the engine and damage a bunch of stuff. So, uh, I gave this thing probably 45 seconds with the grid heater, then I cranked it for probably a solid minute, nothing happened other than a couple hiccups with the tractor, and then I gave it another like 30 or 40 seconds with the grid heater, hit the key and it fired up uh, by 1960s diesel standards instantly. Now I will say immediately I can tell the smoke is uh, a much deeper color, it's not white anymore, it's more black. And uh, the other thing is this engine is running a lot quieter, it's making a lot less engine noise. I read somewhere that if, uh, if you have a clogged air filter, especially on a diesel engine, it'll basically, it creates excessive vacuum or whatever inside the cylinders. So essentially what happens is it sucks oil around the valve seals and up through around the pistons. And so it can smoke a lot more white smoke because it's burning oil. So, uh, yeah, if you'll notice now, hardly smoking at all. It's already smoothing out quite a bit. And there's, like I said, probably a solid third less engine noise. Let's see if it'll idle yet. It wouldn't when I got off the tractor. Eh, sort of. Wow, that just sounds so much healthier. Now another thing is we've lost uh, probably close to 5 PSI of oil pressure. So I don't know what oil was in this, but I'm guessing it was thinner than the 15W40 diesel oil that, that we put in at that Chevron Dello stuff. So hopefully, shoot, that's probably something that's con contributing to how much quieter it's running. So the hydraulics on this work very slowly, if at all. And to be honest with you guys, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This is a 930 series tractor. Really, it's a 931. 
and so it's different than a regular 930 in that it has an 8 speed transmission instead of a 6 and as any car guy could tell you that means the entire like everything behind the clutch is different. So I know where the strainer is on a 930 but I don't know where it is on this 931. I was looking underneath this thing and there's not really like uh, what I was expecting which is kind of like what the Zetter has which is just a little cover with three or four bolts you take that out oh hi Lucky you uh, you pop those out and you know hydraulic strainer comes down you take out big chunks of nasty filth stick it back in and it's fine. Uh, I don't think this has that at least not that's accessible from the bottom of the tractor. So what I think I'm going to do is pop this thing off of here, which it seems to be the hydraulic pump. It said like uh, case, I think that's what that says, but remanufactured product, something pump, and then a bunch of numbers. So I'm pretty sure if we pop this off, then it should have like a long pipe or something that goes down into the bottom of this to pick up liquid. And I'm fairly certain the strainer, if this thing has one, is going to be on the bottom of that. If it's not there, I'm guessing it's behind this cover. But that really wouldn't make sense because that's pretty close up on the transmission and the pickup is usually like at the absolute bottom. But I don't really see anywhere else it could be. Sometimes people ask me, Chucky, how come you have wrenches up to two inches in diameter? And well, for things like this, you really want to mess around with a crescent wrench every time you got to take the line off of something. It moved. We should be good now. Man, I will be honest, I'm a little hesitant to do this. I kind of just want to change the fluid in the external filter, uh, but I'm not going to because as easy as it would be to not do this and probably get away with it, I just don't have to worry about filth. All right, where's my drip pan? Yeah, we're just going straight to the five gallon bucket. I can tell we're going to need it. This is going to be bad. There shouldn't be all that much oil, assuming this is the pressure side of the, uh, the pump, which I think it is. You know, it makes sense if the pickup's on the inside. Then this should just be what little bit is in this line and whatever is above it, which shouldn't be much. So I looked up the uh, part number on this pump, and you can still get these things to this day. They cost somewhere between eleven and thirteen hundred dollars, depending on. Uh, where you buy yours from and so far I don't want to jinx myself but so far I've not needed anything for this which I haven't been able to procure uh, so I'm very very happy about that these old tractors these old cases they still have a lot more life left to give but I will say I find it comical that someone put a fairly expensive remanufactured pump on this and continue to use it to pump milkshake solution here but whatever, that's just the way it goes. Ah, uh, shoot, we're gonna have to take off this assembly here in order to get that last bolt out, I guess. Nice. Now this job's gonna get really interesting really fast. It turns out these bolts go all the way through. Uh, and I guess they don't. Because of course if they did, then we'd have gallons of oil coming out these bolt holes. Man, what do we ever do before power tools? There shouldn't be anything back here except a small gear drive, like a spline coupling almost, but, but I really have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm trying to be careful not using an impact on stuff like this, because if we break off one of these little bolts, it's going to be bad. Oh, yes. Oh, no, there's no strainer in here. Dang it. No, bad wind. Don't be blowing that filth all over my pristine machine here. All right, uh, yeah, uh, this is very strange, but there is no, obviously there's no pipe and no strainer in here. I guess that was just on the older ones. That's what I was hoping to find. Well, shoot. This is the big moment. Lucky! No, I don't need to be poked at right now. 
Oh boy, I'm anxious. I don't know what's behind this door. I film it, but I can barely even see what I'm doing. Hmm, that feels like it goes in there for a ways. That's not just a cover, that's a part of some sort. Perhaps it's a uh, hydraulic pickup. That'd be good. That's not a strain at all. This is like a support for something. Ah, uh, no. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh well, it's worth a shot. Okay, so I've been working on this for a while. As you can see, I got it all put back together. And I was putting this back together, and I think if I had to guess anything on this, which might be a problem, there's a seal, essentially, between the cast part of the back of the tractor and the front of that pump we removed. So if it seems like that pump isn't sucking enough fluid, that might be why. It could be as simple as that, but I don't have a replacement seal in hand, obviously. So likewise, I did not want to uh, really tear into it all that much. But I put this all back together and I posted it on the interweb trying to figure out where the strainer is on this, uh, trying to ask, some, uh, ask around on some old tractor forums. And I found out that it is an internal hydraulic strainer, which is not a very good design because what we have to do is remove these bolts and this entire rear PTO housing to access it. Which is a little disappointing, quite frankly from case I would have expected a lot better than that, but it seems like that's just the way it is. And so what we're going to do is drain the milkshake type fluid out of this and then fill the back half of the tractor with diesel fuel, then drive it around the yard for a while and hopefully that'll like scrub everything out in there and loosen up all sorts of gunk. Then we'll drain that out, then we'll put some hydraulic oil in and hopefully at this point the hydraulics will be working better. I don't actually know if it is a clogged strainer, but you know, we change the fluid, we give it a new external filter and hopefully that'll help quite a bit. I don't want to take the back. PTO off this tractor because it's going to be extremely labor intensive and it's just plain and simple might not be necessary. For all we know, somebody did that when they changed out this pump and this pump might only have a couple hundred hours on it. I mean, it's clearly not the original. It says right on it, remanufactured. So maybe they did it then. Maybe it's not that bad, um, but we'll, we'll find out, I guess. Let's drain this stuff. 